This is part 9 of the Stuart Major Beam rebuild and it's time to look at the base. This is a base that's been made by a friend of mine. He's a very proficient woodworker and his name is Ben Hardcastle. If you look at my other videos, particularly the videos about Hammond organ speaker cabinets, you'll see his name mentioned there. This base is a little bit on the experimental side. It's made out of some wood that was left over from a staircase and it's one and a quarter inches thick. The construction of this base is very strong indeed. It's glued with PVA and screwed together. And what I'm going to do is clad it with these bricks. These miniature bricks came from America, I understand. Although, of course, it does say on the package made in China. They're very good indeed, and they're fastened to a backing, which saves a lot of trouble. A while back I made a beam engine base, and I used some stuff called Typhoc. These are proper little bricks. Unlike these, which are actually just fascia bricks, a bit like stone cladding. In this clip, I'm looking at the geometry and how it works out. The base is five and a half inches deep, and if I remove one course of these bricks, that leaves me with the brick height of five and a half inches, which is pretty good, really. And as it says on the pack, these are genuine model bricks in one inch equals one foot scale. These bricks are very convenient to use and very easy to fit as you just stick the whole sheet to the side of your piece of wood. Typhot bricks are excellent because you can go around corners and they look just like proper bricks. But if you go around corners with these, they're not going to look right because they're too thin. So what do we do here, I wonder? One thing I could do is either live with it or use a piece of mahogany like this and make a corner out of the mahogany, which could be mitered and it would then look really good. But of course, there'd be a lot of sealing with primer and painting before it looked like it was made out of stone or brick. A better idea, I think, is to use some one eighth thick angle. Not quite like this, this is the biggest piece I had. In fact, it's two sixteenth pieces put together. So a larger piece of brass angle is a good idea. I'll think about this further. In this clip, I'm taking a quick look at the level between the bearings on the bed plate and the pedestal. The crankshaft needs to be aligned to the bed plate at a perfect 90 degrees. So some adjustment will be required on the pedestal side of things. And I'm going to try this by just packing the pedestal to see what kind of a packing I need to level up the crankshaft. At the moment, the packing is looking a little bit like four millimeters or about an eighth of an inch. I won't, of course, be using four millimeter ply for this. The final packing will be a piece of steel, similar to what you see here, but much neater and much smaller. For me, the ideal solution would be to use a piece of steel angle an eighth of an inch thick and big enough to bolt to the baseboard and also bolt to the box. That way I would get a very rigid fixing for the pedestal bearing. Unfortunately though, before I can do anything constructive with alignment of bearings, I have to get over this problem. The box is not fully square. This has cast some doubt on the suitability of this material for a base for such an engine. That's the trouble with things made from wood. It is an organic product. Even though the wood is one and a quarter inches thick, it does move around slightly. I can actually rectify this by putting the block in the milling machine and taking a fine cut on the top and bottom of it. I will give that some further thought. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.